Hello, my name is Jonathan Bisnett. In today's circuit, I'm looking at a common emitter amplifier with a voltage divider biasing. Uh, in my previous video, I also did a common emitter amplifier, but I used an emitter bias on it. So, in this case, we're going to look at this um, using the voltage divider biasing and try to get you a little better picture here. It's obviously hard to see because of how small everything is. Uh, but you'll see here I got a couple of capacitors on the front here. Uh, one of them's going from uh, the uh, the base uh, to the other to uh, off to the uh, other side here, and then this this one's coming off the collector to the other side. You can see the transistor sitting in there, and then off the back I've got really a couple of resistors here. The two middle ones are both connected to the base, and that's that's uh, providing the divider aspect of it. And then on either side, there's a 470 ohm transistor, one to the collector, one to the emitter. Uh, the interesting part is, uh, I'm I'm feeding this uh, I'm feeding this uh, 12 volts. The interesting part is that. Uh, this does a very good job of amplifying the signal. What you'll see is the uh, the smaller set of lines here, the inner ones, if we click over here, this is what's uh, being fed into the circuit. Uh, and the intervals are about uh, 20 milliamps. So I've got 40 milliamps approximately peak to peak. My output is uh, considerably larger. In this case, we're talking about just shy of of six, uh, excuse me, of three volts. The intervals are 0.5 volts each, and I've got almost six total, so just shy of three volts. So from 40 milliamps to three volts, uh, we're looking at about a gain of about 75 uh, on the transistor. Uh, and you can see, as is expected with a common emitter amplifier, the uh, output is 180 degrees out of phase with the input. The interesting, the, well, another interesting thing I found is when I was first working with this circuit, I put it together and I uh, was not paying enough attention and I actually left out uh, this bypass capacitor that uh, connects between the emitter and ground and serves as an AC ground for the circuit. Uh, whereas I also have a 470 ohm uh, resistor in there as well. But if you take this, if you take this bypass capacitor out, what you'll find on the scope is you've got virtually no gain. Uh, in fact, if I roll the scope on channel two back to the same 20 milliamp, you'll see I really have. You can't even do it that well. Uh, I don't even have as much output as I had input it frankly uh, gives you next to nothing. So that bypass capacitor absolutely makes all the difference in the world to this circuit. Once I, oops, once I pop it in there, you can see you get, that, uh, you get that amplification back. So when you're looking at the schematic, that is absolutely essential that that uh, bypass capacitor be in there. In this case, it happens to be a 15 microfarad capacitor because that gave me a relatively low reactance at the 10 kilohertz that I'm running into this circuit. Anyway, I will include a URL to a blog that uh, lays out in more detail the actual mathematics in this circuit and a schematic of the circuit uh, so you can see specifically what was done along with a couple of screenshots. So anyway, I uh, hope you found this interesting. Thanks again.